Welcome everyone to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of all the people who are helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. It's so good that you are here. We're so excited that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And if it's your first time to join with us in online worship, we are just particularly thrilled you are here. And we want to encourage you and everyone to use our contact form. The link to that is in the comments and it's all there's also a QR uh, code right there on your screen. Please use that contact form. This is a way that we can be connected with you, that we can get you our e-newsletter when you put your email address in there so that you can know about all the things that are going on with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to connect in your life of faith and growing in that faith and service and love. And there's also a place on that contact form for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So we encourage everyone to use that contact form today. Now, when we do gather for online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. This isn't just a random video that you're watching. This is worship with one another, worship of God. So we promise to do these things. We covenant to participate. That means we're gonna participate in what we're doing. We encourage you to turn off other distractions and devices, maybe light a candle if that helps you to focus in. We encourage you during this season to maybe get a Bible or a Bible app so you can follow along with our readings. Go ahead and sing when it's time to sing and pray when it's time to pray, just fully participate in what we're doing. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And this means that the way we are in the comments section together, the way that we may be gathered with other people in our household while we're worshiping or wherever we are, and the way that we're sending this out into the world, that all of it is a blessing to everyone who is involved. Now today is week four in our series, turn the page. And again, we encourage you to get a Bible or a Bible app so you can follow along. We've been learning about the Bible, how to read the Bible, uh, and diving in in some special ways. So we're continuing that this week. This is also communion for all people. So if you haven't done so already, we encourage you to get some bread or cracker or a baked good, some juice or a beverage, so that you can join in this special time of communion where all people are welcome. Again, welcome to worship, and we can't wait to continue this time together. Please join us in singing Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. I'm Martha Clark, and I'm a member at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I belong to the De Zephyr class and the Tuesday morning Bible study. I invite you to please join me in a spirit of prayer. 
creator of all that is, by your design, the seasons turn and the days grow longer as the light expands irresistibly into dark corners, shed your light into our hearts, into our community and into our world. Renew our spirits that we may reflect on your goodness to all who are discouraged. Renew your church with your Holy Spirit so that we worship and serve with the love and purpose of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's share the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you and respond and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Good morning from the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church Community Health Team. We meet together to help guide our decisions about making sure we're keeping our congregation members as safe as possible during these COVID times. I am Joe Johnson. I am also co-chair of the Missions Committee alongside my wife, Rebecca, and peace be with you. And hi, I'm Pastor Meredith Brown, our lead pastor. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Alan Griffey. I sing in the praise band and I'm chair of the Welcome and Inclusion team. Peace be with you. Good morning. I'm Mark Schmidt. I rearrange electrons. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Reverend Margaret Ann, and I am the executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, and peace be with you. Hey, I'm Lori Klemmer, and I'm the director of Youth and Children's Ministries, and peace be with you. Hi, I'm Angie LaFrenz. I'm a, just a member of Douglas Avenue. Peace be with you. It's time for small talk. So all you kids who are joining with us in online worship, come in really close to your device and screen so that you can see and hear everything with small talk. This time is led by Miss Laurie, our director of children and youth ministries and her very special assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in close right now because it's time for small talk. Hello everyone, it is Miss Laurie and Laud the Lamb and his assistant Cohen. And today we are going to talk about Groundhog's Day. Yes, on the calendar. It will say, this is Herman Hamster. He's helping us out today because the groundhog was clearly busy. So it says here, Groundhog Day, right there on the calendar. So, according to the groundhog, either six more weeks of winter or spring's right around the corner. But does that actually work? No. Rodents do not tell us when spring will or won't be here. The calendar has spring here in March, <laughs> right? March 20th, right there. Spring begins on March 20th, okay? Rodents do not predict weather. No, it's just something kind of fun we do because really, calendar doesn't even really tell us when spring's going to be here because a lot of times on March the 20th it still doesn't feel like spring sometimes. Who plans that, Laud? Who knows when spring's going to be here this year? <coughs> you don't know? Is it Herman? Does he tell you? Oh, I wouldn't take his advice. Don't take the advice of a hamster or groundhog. God has it all <coughs> planned out with the flowers and the spring and the warm weather. That's God's plan, not the groundhog's plan, not our calendar's plan. That's God's plan. So remember that when you're looking out at snow or nice weather, 
all God's plan. But the groundhog is still fun. Bye guys. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Joe Johnson. I am co-chair of the Missions Committee alongside my lovely wife, Rebecca. And I want to talk to you a little bit about missions today. Now, Douglas Avenue has a heart for missions, showing and sharing God's love and healing here at home and across the world. During worship in February, we're going to celebrate some of the ways that our church has been in mission over the past year. We won't be able to talk about everything you've done or are doing, we're going to hit some of the highlights. One of the ways our church is in mission is through our generous financial giving through our special offerings, which make possible all kinds of work in the world. In 2021, you gave literally tens of thousands of dollars through these special offerings. Some supported missions around the world, such as the United Methodist Committee on Relief, His Home Orphanage in Haiti, and Hunger Relief through Crop Walk. You also gave to support United Methodist special offerings such as the Human Relations Day, Peace with Justice Sunday, and Native American Ministries. And you gave support to life-changing work right here at home in Springfield through our Easter and Christmas Eve mission offerings. You also gave over 3,000 to our 2021 Christmas Eve offering, part of which went to Helping Hands of Springfield and their work to help end homelessness in our community. The other part went to the Santa Express program of Chaddock Children's Home. Thank you so much for your generous giving, which makes possible for these kinds of missions. And here's a thank you from Chaddock Children's Home. Thank you so much for making Christmas happen for all of the kids at Chaddock, from all of us. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and thanks again. Hey everyone, look at all of these smiling faces. I'm Sue Burge. And I'm Randy Burge. And we attend Douglas Avenue. Our first reading from the Bible is Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17, known as the Ten Commandments. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible readings. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the houses of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the inequity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and that all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, 
You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hi, I am Molly Barrett. I am the founder of Compass for Kids. I'm also in the Young Adult Sunday School class, and I'm on STRC. Our second reading from the Bible is Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Jesus said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which it was not lawful for him or his companions to eat, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple break the Sabbath and yet are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus left that place and entered their synagogue. A man was there with a withered hand, and they asked him, Is it lawful to cure on the Sabbath? So that they might accuse Jesus. He said to them, Suppose one of you has only one sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath. Will you not lay hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a human being than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and it was restored as sound as the other. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. Amen. We are in week four of our Turn the Page worship series, where we are exploring various parts of the Bible, writings within our Bible, and learning some helpful ways to read and understand what's in the Bible. Just to recap where we've been uh, up to, what we've been up to thus far, the first week we looked at what is in the Bible and how we got it. The next week we asked, is the Bible true? And decided the Bible is very much a true book about God and the relationship of God and people, but it's not an up-to-date textbook on science, biology, or physiology. Last week, we took a look at the violence in the Bible. Because the Bible is a real book about real people, it includes accounts of the real violence that haunts humanity to this day. And our very human longing to ascribe our own violence to be God's intention or punishment. The truth is the Bible is not glossed over or sanitized and this authenticity gives the Bible power for real living and real transformation. All through our series, we've been learning our basic rule of Bible study. You know it, you love it, say it with me now. If you don't know it, it's time to learn it. And it is this, read it as it is for what it is. Okay, say it with me, read it as it is for what it is. So remember, this means when we read poetry, we're going to read it as poetry, not as science. When somebody says they had a dream, we'll read it as a dream and not as a documentary of the future. And we're going to continue to read all of the Bible and learn what it says about itself and pay attention to what it might have meant for its original audience's culture and context as well. Today's focus question is this, does the Bible matter today? I was talking with a friend earlier this week who, at the beginning of our new year, 2022, took up a spiritual New Year's resolution to read the Bible straight through from beginning to end, cover to cover. My friend, it started with the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible in the book of Genesis, and the plan is just to read straight through all of the Old Testament through to the New Testament and to end up with a bang with the final book of the Bible, the Revelation to John. 
We were talking earlier this week about how it's going and they reported they had started off really strong, moved on right through the exciting stories that are found in Genesis and on into the book of Exodus with the stories of Moses and the people of Israel being brought out of slavery in Egypt. Very exciting. But things have slowed down a bit here at the end of Exodus for them as they have entered into the book of Leviticus. My friend said, whoa, those lists of laws and rituals, wow, that's a lot. Uh, weird, strange, esoteric, random, nonsensical even. I'm really getting bogged down. And they haven't even moved on into numbers yet, which is a real page turner. So my friend has hit this common problem in taking this cover to cover approach to reading the Bible. It gets really tough in there uh, in some of those early books of the Old Testament until you kind of come through the lists of laws to the much more exciting stories of conquest and battles, the genocides that are found in Joshua and Judges which is a strange thing to say, except that's how it feels when you're reading through the Bible as one long book. But this is certainly my friend's experience and it brings us to a big question when you get into digging into the Bible. Do these laws really matter? Is this really what God's word to us in the Bible? Is this what it's all about? Let's just take a couple of verses like Leviticus chapter 19, verses 26 through 28. If you want to read along, again, it's Leviticus chapter 19, verses 26 through 28. It reads like this. You shall not eat anything with its blood. You shall not practice augury or witchcraft. You shall not round off the hair on your temples or mar the edges of your beard. You shall not make any gashes in your flesh for the dead or tattoo any marks upon you. I am the Lord. In three quick verses, the Bible condemns blood sausage, beard trimmers and wearing bangs, body art, and knocking on wood to avoid a bad thing coming true. I'll confess that I have indulged, indulged in all of these things, and I probably will again, except maybe the bangs. So how are we to know which of these laws we should still keep? How do we figure out what really matters from the Bible for us today? In our United Methodist way of being Christian, we absolutely believe the Bible matters today. One of the strengths of the method of Methodism is that we also use the gifts God has given us to engage, understand, wrestle with, and be transformed in our reading of the Bible. The way we read the Bible is one of the methods of Methodism. Sometimes we call this the REST method, R-E-S-T, because it says that we seek to understand our faith by fully engaging the four sources of divine revelation, reason, R, experience, E, scripture, S, and tradition, T, rest. This means that we don't read the Bible in isolation from the rest of how God can be known. We engage the Bible with our reason. We have brains on purpose. We need to use them. We engage tradition. It turns out we are not the first or even wisest people to ask these kinds of questions and we should pay attention to what others have thought and said. And we use our experience, our own experience, others' experience, the experience of the Holy Spirit that opens up the Bible as the living word of God. And that, my friends, means the Bible has the power to inform, explain, challenge, and gift God's love and purposes into people's everyday lives. The, power, the Bible has the power to change lives, to shape and form people to love and follow Jesus into the world, and so has authority for us and for God's people from deep in the past to now and into the future. With that said, even with the strength of our rest method of engaging the Bible with the God-given gifts of reason, experience, and tradition, we can still run head on into confusion and contradiction. How do we decide what matters? For the most part, there are biggies in the Bible, the biggies that most folks find agreement on. Things like no murder, no coveting, the Ten Commandments, which Randy and Sue read for us earlier. Love God, love your neighbor. But how do we decide about the others? Jewish biblical scholars have been asking this question for centuries. We can read a thousand years of this dialogue in the interpretive books that the rabbis have written called the Talmud. In the Talmud, they describe their interpretation as a hedge around the law, the Torah. 
like rumble strips on the side of the highway that bring you back to center, in this case, back to the center of the law. I read the Bible as containing both Torah, the big law principles, and some levels of more culturally specific interpretations of that big law, like the Talmud. Some of the rules are essential, but some seem adaptable over time and culture as we learn more through science and practice, as the Holy Spirit continues to lead and guide us, and as we grow in loving and following Jesus more closely. Both Jesus and the Apostle Paul, who was responsible for, responsible for several of our New Testament books, both Jesus and Paul teach Christians to pay attention to the big law and not to be distracted by the trappings of righteousness and keeping more culturally specific practices. Jesus regularly calls out the religious leaders of his time for their hypocrisy on, in ignoring the big principles of the law while rigidly enforcing cultural norms of particulars in religious practice. You know, that is just a great temptation of religious people, to keep in focus on hedge rules of cultural practices that can lead us to violating the big laws of God. We are not immune to this, not at all. How much time is wasted in churches today worrying about what kind of clothes to wear, what kind of music to sing, how long the sermon should be, whether online worship is real worship or not, come on, and what sexual identity should or should not be allowed. All the while, the poor grow more hungry, the homeless grow more cold, the sick grow more sick, and the spiritually seeking are not brought any closer to God. In the passage from Matthew 12 that Molly shared with us today, we hear how Jesus breaks minutia of Sabbath-keeping rules, though very biblical rules, in order to keep the deep purpose of the Sabbath and honoring God's love, healing, and merciful rest. Throughout his teachings, Jesus gives us some helpful tools in thinking through how we understand which rules are essential and which we have freedom to wrestle with or move away from. Greatest among these tools is his summary of the law and distillation of its essential core. This is something we share very often together at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church because it's really important. And it's found directly quoted from Jesus in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. This is the law of love that Jesus puts at the center of our faith. When we have questions about doing what is right or what to believe or what really matters about our faith or in the Bible, Jesus said to hold our choices up for comparison to the law of love. Is it loving? Does it increase more love in the world? Does it make us feel more beloved of God? Does it help others experience and share love? With the law of love as a measurement, we can test to see how our lives and faith matter to God's great work of loving the world. This can be hard, and it makes reading the Bible hard sometimes. It takes a little work sometimes. Sometimes we can find things in the Bible that violate this law of love. For generations, people argued that the Bible commanded the enslavement of black people, the degradation of women, and the murder of Jewish people. These people were wrong, and the reading of the Bible was wrong. How do I know? Because it violates Jesus' law of love. God's law of love brings life for you, for me, for all who seek it. And it brings life abundantly. And that matters. The Bible matters, especially today. Thank you for continuing to dive deeply with us into our Turn the Page worship series. Next week, we're taking a little intermission to welcome the amazing missionary, Connie Wyke to bring our message as a part of our mission celebration during the month of February. You don't want to miss Connie's message and our celebration together, so please make sure to join in worship next week. And then we will come back to our Turn the Page series and our next question, what about the weird stuff in the Bible? Remember to ask a friend to join you. Let's keep working and dreaming, learning and living God's love together as we turn the page. Amen. Good morning. My name is Marcia Stout. I'm the keyboard player for the DAUMC Praise Band. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path.
feel afraid, think I lost my way, still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are here, please be near me to the end. My word is a lamp unto my feet. not forget your love for me and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus be my guide and hold me to your side and I will love you to the end. My word is a lamp to my feet Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. My word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. My word is a lamp unto my feet a light unto my path, and a light unto my path, you're the light unto my path. It's time for Holy Communion for all people. And if you haven't done so, I encourage you to get your bread, your crackers, your baked good, and your juice, your beverage, whatever you're using up close with you. And it's wonderful to be joined together right now by Nancy Vereen, who is our wonderful lay leader at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, as we're going to lead communion prayers together. Thanks for being here, Nancy. Thank you. Jesus Christ invites everyone to his table, his feast of Holy Communion. Wherever you are, whoever you are, church member, not a church member, with your culture and race, whatever your age, child, youth, adult, with your gender identity and sexual orientation, sitting alone or gathered with your household, however many or few that may be, in the fullness of who you are, however you are, and wherever you are, you are welcome here. This is Jesus's holy meal, and you are invited to participate however you want to participate today. Please join with me in a few moments of silent prayer as we offer our brokenness to God. God, we confess our lack of trust in you. God, we confess that we turn away from those in need. God, we confess, we let fear and weariness overwhelm us. God, we confess the sins of our soul. Receive God's promise to all. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Know that God's promise of grace and forgiveness is yours today and always. Amen. I invite you to bring your bread and your juice close to you as we continue with our responsive prayers. I will say a line and you will say it back uh, to me with Nancy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
holy, creating, life-breathing God, it is right to give thanks to you at all times, for you lift us up to the heights. On wings like eagles, you enable us to soar with the possibilities of healing, of revolution, of transformation, both within our own souls and within this world, which needs so much care. And then when we turn away from you and our love fails, your love remains steadfast and true, lifting us back into your never failing presence and power. So with all your people everywhere and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And yet, it is not the bright skies where we most often live. We are here with our feet on the ground, with your feet planted firmly beside us in your son, Jesus Christ, as we try to walk without fainting, walk through the shadows of death and sickness and addiction, walk through life changes of celebrations and births, transitions and loss. We remember that Jesus knows intimately all of this life. We remember that your gift of him to us and the world brings the life, hope, salvation, and transformation that we need and crave. So in the name of Jesus, we offer the prayers of our hearts to you. Receive our prayers as we share them aloud in our hearts and in the comments. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. I invite you to pick up your bread. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can put your bread down. And I invite you to pick up your cup. Loving God, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You can put your cup down. And so, remembering your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice of love and service, intimately bound with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. I invite everyone to pick up your hands as we pray for the Holy Spirit to uh, fill all of our bread and all of our cups. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered across geography and time and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all of these gifts of bread and cup be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may become one with Christ, who lived and died and rose to bring healing to a broken world. You can put your hands down. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until we feast together at the heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. Maker of justice and mercy, spirit of compassion and grace, holy one who lifts us to the heights so that we see again the vast possibilities of your peace, even as we pray for it here on earth. We pray to you now as Jesus taught us saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that we will eat are a tangible experience of Jesus' transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and changing us from the inside out. I invite you to pick up your piece of bread, eat and experience that this is Jesus's love for you. And I invite you to pick up your cup, 
drink and experience that this is Jesus's love for you. Please join me in our prayer of thanks. Eternal God, thank you for this holy mystery in which you give yourselves to us through bread and cup. Send us from this meal in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's been a cold and blustery week over much of the Midwest, but we hope you'll always find a warm and friendly welcome here at Douglas Avenue. We're glad you've joined with us. We are a stronger community of faith together. During February, we're observing Mission Celebration Month at DAUMC. We hope you enjoyed the video from our friends at Shaddock earlier in the service and learning how your Christmas mission donations were put to good use. Next Sunday, we hope you'll join us in person or online as we greet guest preacher Connie Wyke, a missionary in Southeast Asia supported by Douglas Avenue. Our mission goal this week is to share some DAUMC love within our own congregation. We hope you'll take some time this week to send a Valentine Day card to one of our own shut-ins. You can contact Sue Landgreeb through the church office to get addresses and for more details. Another great way to show love for your neighbors is by supporting the DAUMC Micropantry, which is located at the entrance to the Education Building on the west end of the campus. Your contributions of non-perishable food, hygiene, and cleaning items can really make a difference during these difficult winter months. And we hope you'll take time to mark your calendar for two upcoming events right now. On Monday, February 28th, we will have our next session of Vital Conversations on Race. You can get complete information in the e-news or call the church office for more information. And then on Saturday, March 26th, Wouldn't It Be Lovely will have its next fabulous showcase sale. There will be hundreds of beautiful items at attractive prices. Plan now on attending and supporting our associates. Of course, none of our programs or ministries would be possible without your generous financial support. One of the easiest ways to give is through our online giving portal located on the DAUMC website. You'll find a QR code on the screen right now, as well as on the back page of this morning's bulletin if you're in the sanctuary. You also have the option for automatic bill pay, ACH bank transfer, or bringing your check into the church. If you have any questions or would like assistance, please contact the church office. Of course, we hope you'll take a moment to fill out our online contact form. You'll find a link in the comment section of this morning's online worship and a QR code on the front page of your bulletin in the sanctuary. Once there, you'll be able to sign up for our e-newsletter. It's a great way to keep in touch as well as to include your prayer requests for the week. Now, it's time to return to worship. Please join us in singing one of Alan Griffey's favorite songs, Everlasting God. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not think you won't.
Thank you for joining in this time of worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It's been such an honor to have this time with you, and I pray that all of it has been meaningful, challenging, and just the best way, um, encouraging and empowering for you in your life of faith and as you're growing in love and service to God. We encourage you to continue to join with us in online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30. We encourage you again to uh, use that contact form. Remember, there's a place there to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. We love to pray with you, so please make sure to use that and so that we can connect with you and encourage you and help you to grow in your life of faith. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that the God of love who has created you, who's loved you since the very beginning, loves you today and every day, that Jesus goes with you to help you to encourage you, and the Holy Spirit is there, right there with you, to open your eyes and your ears, your heart, your mind, to see and hear and to understand what God is showing to you and to be able to serve out into our world every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Amen.